Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here today for this very special occasion, the inauguration of the European Union Drugs Agency, the EUDA. And welcome to the very first EUDA press conference. We are honored to have with us today, this morning, four very distinguished speakers who will be providing insights into the agency's mission and objectives and the challenges posed by the drugs problem today. Following the four speeches, we'll open the floor to questions from the press. So let's get started. We're delighted to have with us again, European Commissioner for Home Affairs, Ms. Ylva Johansson. So this is a, a great day, uh, a big day, a big day for Europe and a big day for all of you. January 2022, I proposed a new and stronger mandate for you. And today, two years later, I'm proud to be here in Lisbon to launch the new mandate for the European Drugs Agency and a better name or so. You can be very proud as well, Alexis and all your team. This new mandate is the sign of the great trust we all have in you. And can I also use this opportunity, Alexis, to thank you for these five years that I've been Commissioner for Home Affairs. It's been a pleasure to work close with you and to have this agency under your leadership. With this stronger mandate, this will allow you to do an even better job than you do today warning Europe of the dangers of drugs. Since your establishment ne nearly 30 years ago, you have become a center of excellence on drugs. Your information is factual, objective, reliable. The essential for civil society, for academics and for governments. Your monitoring detects emerging risks and new developments. Your early warning system is key to alert member states so they can respond to new dangers. And for me personally, your work has always been essential when preparing my policies and initiatives against crime and drugs. Also on the global stage, when you speak, I listen, Europe listens, and the world listens. And we must listen because you have something important to say. You show drugs are increasingly available, increasingly potent, increasingly dangerous. In your most recent drug report, you warn on synthetic opioids. Last year, especially netacins, highly potent and extremely deadly. You also show more than half a million people injected drugs in the European Union and more than 6,000 people died of an overdose in just one year. And you show also that people in Europe are mixing drugs more and more, taking potentially deadly cocktails of different kinds of drugs. You are doing an excellent job, and I want to say today, you are not alone. You are here in Lisbon, in Portugal, and maybe sometimes you feel a bit far away from Bus Brussels, at the most western point of Europe. But you are at the heart of Europe. You are part of a great European effort against crime and to counter the flow of drugs and the harm they cause. Organized crime, drugs crime, is one of the biggest threats we face today. Criminals undermine our societies with violence and corruption. Europol did a recent mapping of the most threatening uh, criminal groups in European Union. They mapped 821 most threatening criminal groups. More than half of them are specialized in drug trafficking. 70% of them use corruption. They use the money from the drug trafficking to buy politicians, to buy officials, to buy access to ports, for example. 70% of them use also violence. We can see that they are killing and threatening also politicians, lawyers, journalists. Almost 90% of them are involved in the legal economy, running ordinary businesses or infiltrating ordinary businesses. This is a huge threat towards our society. I should say that this threat is as big as the terrorist threat. 
For nearly five years as Home Affairs Commissioner, it's been my mission to significantly step up our fight against the organized criminal groups by improving police cooperation and information exchange with asset recovery rules to take away criminal profits and to be able to follow the money. And in January this year, I launched the European Ports Alliance to stop criminal infiltration in our harbors. The Ports Alliance is now becoming operational. We had 14 ports when we started and now we have 31 ports uh, sign up to the Ports Alliance. I also was the first ever EU Commissioner for Home Affairs to travel to Latin America. Isn't that strange that that had not happened before? I did that, of course, because we need to work across the Atlantic to fight these criminal groups. We saw in this mapping of the most threatening criminal groups that they uh, contains of 112 nationalities. So almost all groups are cross-border and they have, are working also across the Atlantic. And it's important that we build our transatlantic relations because it takes a network to fight a network. And following my visit to Colombia and Ecuador, we are conducting now a security assessment of the port of Guayaquil. And the EU is now negotiating agreements on, for Europol with five additional Latin American countries, Ecuador being one of those. This is important to allow police and law enforcement to exchange personal data and to do uh, joint investigations. And today, I will be here to witness the signing of a working arrangement between the Drug Agency and Ecuador, and we have the ambassador here. A working arrangement to collect data, monitor cocaine markets and improve observation, to set up early warning systems, exchange strategies on prevention, health and social response, to ensure the health and safety of citizens on both sides of the Atlantic, in Ecuador and in the European Union. More working arrangements are in the making and we need more partners in this fight. The ability to work better together internationally is also possible thanks to your new mandate. Before signing the agreement with Ecuador, we will officially launch the new EU Drugs Agency, which will give you new powers and possibilities. You will be able to examine the danger of drug mixing, polysubstance use, and how we can counter it. You will have a stronger analytical capacity thanks to a network of laboratories. You will be able to work more internationally with key partners like Ecuador, but also Colombia, Peru, Chile. You will be able to issue early warning systems or early warnings with the new European drug alert system. And you'll have the capacity to make health and security threat assessments. Alexis, to you and your team. Thank you for all you have done, analyzing and monitoring drugs, warning of the danger for nearly 30 years. And thank you for preparing the transformation into the drugs agency into such a short time. I want you all to be very proud. You are doing an excellent and important job. You protect people's health and safety in Europe. And with the new mandate, you will be able to do an even better job. Many congratulations and lots of success. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. And now we're delighted to introduce the Secretary of State for Health of Portugal, Dr. Ana Povo. You have the floor, thank you. Dear European Commissioner for Home Affairs, dear Chair of the Management Board and dear Ex Executive Director of the European Union Drugs Agencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, today marks a momentous occasion for European Union. We gather not just to celebrate the launch of a new agency, but a renewed commitment to tackling the complex issues of drugs across our continent. For over three decades, Portugal and Lisbon have been proud to house European Monitoring Center for Drugs and Drug Addiction, a vital research for evidence-based drug policy. This dedication continues today as we usher the European Union drugs agencies. 
the UDA builds up on the incredible foundation left by the monitoring center. It signifies a deeper commitment not only in monitoring drug trends, but actively shaping a more effective response and developing new innovation solutions. Portugal has a long story of innovation and leadership in the area of drug policy. In 1919, we are one of the first countries to discriminate the use of all drugs. This policy was controversial at the time, but have proved to be a great success in public health and social terms and has said Portugal has a model for other countries considering drug policy reforms. In 2024, Portugal took another step in reinforce our commitment in the area with the reformulation of the National Institute for Additive Behaviors and Dependence, combining strategic level and local level interventional service across the country. Drug use is a complex challenge. It's not simple about law enforcement or treatment. We must address the social and economic factors that contribute to drug use, poverty, unemployment, and lack of opportunity. Building strong communities is essential to a holistic approach. I'm sure that working together, we can overcome it. The EU drug engines has the potential to be transformative and it can foster a coordinate European response to new and emergency threats. Portugal stand ready to be a stronger partner in this endeavor. We want to continue working together, strengthen partnership and synergy with our national institute. The Portuguese government wish the ancients and its team every success. We are sure that Lisbon will continue to inspire you in its rich story of leadership and action in the area of drug policy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary of State. I would now like to give the floor to Dr. Franz Peach, who is Chair of the EUDA Management Board representing Austria. Thank you very much, Dr. Peach. Thank you very much. Yeah, what a wonderful day and what an exciting moment. Honorable Commissioner Johansson, Excellency Dr. Bovo, Mr. Frudoso de Melo, Chief of Staff of the President of the Portuguese Republic, Mr. Da Silva Lopez, Chief of the Protocol of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Portuguese Republic, Your Excellencies, the Ambassadors from Belgium and Ecuador, Honorable Members of the European Parliament, especially Ms. Santos, our Rapporteur, and Mr. Coelho, dear present members of the Management Board, but especially dear Executive Director Gostel and members of the staff distinguished guests. I am very honored to welcome you on the occasion of the official lunch of the European Union's drugs agents in Lisbon, our wonderful host country, in the presence of our Honorable Commissioner for Home Affairs, Ms. Ilva Johansson. The inauguration of the European Union's drugs agency represents an important milestone in the evolution of drugs monitoring at European level. The European Monitoring Center for Drugs and Drug Addiction has made great progress over the past years since its establishment in February 1993 and has become an internationally recognized hub of excellence of drug issues, be it in the areas of health, demand or supply. The new mandate of the European Union's Drugs Agency strengthens its mission and lays down the basis for improving how Europe tackles present and future challenges in the drugs field. I am convinced that with its fit-for-purpose mission, the EU Drugs Agency will provide significant added value to European and national policymakers and professionals in the drugs field as they address the causes and consequences of drug use. I would like to sincerely thank 
you, dear Commissioner, on my personal behalf and on behalf of the Management Board for all your support to the proposal for a new legislative act as proposed by the European Commission back in January 2022 and for making this big step forward to come true. Thank you very much. Many thanks also go to all our colleagues in the DG Home for their collaboration. And I would like to further thank all member states under the French, Czech and Swedish presidencies of the Council of the European Union, of the European Parliament, and for having given this proposal a high political priority and having managed to finalize the negotiations very, very rapidly to agree on the final regulation in June last year. The agency has engaged already for more than a year in the stepwise implementation of the new mandate and in profound changes which imply also important challenges and leads us to a new identity as of yesterday, 2nd of July. I would like to express also on behalf of the management board my gratitude to the executive director, dear Alexi, and all of your staff, the whole team, for all the efforts undertaken until today to prepare for the new mission of the agency in all its aspects. Tomorrow and Friday, the EU Drugs Agency's management board will hold its constituent meeting, during which we will take decisions and discuss issues linked to the new mandate. For the first time on 5th of July, the meeting will be extended for a specific session with geostrategic discussions on international cooperation and emerging drug trends. This session will include high-level representatives from candidate and potential candidate countries to the EU, as well as from non-EU countries with which the EU Drugs Agency collaborates. Executive directors of other EU agencies and the chair of the Civil Society Forum on Drugs will also attend. I look forward to a fruitful and innovative exchange. I can assure you of the commitment of the member states to fully support to shift towards a new agency, and I am confident that we will turn it into a collective success. All the best to the European Union's drugs agency. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Peach. Um, and last but not least, I'd like to give the floor to the EUDA Executive Director, Alexi Guzdel, to address us. Thank you very much, Alexi. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cathy. Um, good morning, everyone. Dear Commissioner, dear Minister, dear Mr. Verlinden, I, I want to welcome you also. Um, dear Ambassadors, uh, dear colleagues, uh, dear members of the management board, it's a, it's a very, very special day for all of us today. And um, when I was preparing uh, this this uh, event, I think the, the, word, the first word I want to share with you is the word of gratitude. First of all, because without all the people who are here, there would be no EMCDD and there would be no EUDA. And I'm so proud of uh, and thankful to all the efforts we did the last eight and a half years together mm -hmm. since I took my, my duties as director. And I, I think it's a real privilege that we have the commissioner and the ministers coming and telling you how, they, how much they appreciate your work. So uh, for the, those who are here, I invite you to applause all of those who make this work possible the last 30 years. I would like to share a few ideas and uh, views with you about our agency, our Europe, our mission, and our people. First, our agency, the very beginning, um, started with the heroin epidemic, drug-related deaths, HIV AIDS epidemic. There were only 12 member states, not yet even a Maastricht Treaty. When President Mitterrand launched the idea, the proposal to create a drugs observatory in Europe. And I was so privileged to be one of those who did the feasibility study. And I'm so privileged, I'm feeling so privileged that I still have my contract as an expert. Um, and when we started in 93, we have been created to answer to the question, how many? Because what we did not have at that time were data about what's happening in Europe. How many people are dying from overdose? How people are 
uh, have been infected by HIV AIDS. Uh, and in the commentary that will be published soon in a joint publication with Correlation, uh, I mentioned one of my strongest professional experience, which was to see the nurses and the medical teams in Madrid and in other cities in Europe just near burnout because they had their clients in the first substitution treatment program, they were dying from AIDS in their hands. And this is what has shaped the European approach on drugs. This is what has shaped, including the harm reduction strategies, and we need to learn and to build from those experiences to address together the future challenges. In 97, before the adoption of the Amsterdam Treaty, there was another very important decision, very forward-looking, which was the creation of the early warning system on new psychoactive drugs that for the first time, and still is the first system in the world where you have 28, and also we have Norway that joined in 2002, and Turkey later, we have uh, 29 countries who work 24-7 for the new alert system created at that time that allowed us to detect more than 950 substances. And that is unique in the world because together, not only we can alert, but we also prepare with our scientific committee the risk assessments. And on that basis, the EU can decide to put the substance in, under control. And it's very fast when all the steps are implemented. It takes six months to take a decision, and the member states have only six months to implement. And then there was the Amsterdam Treaty. Don't worry, I will not make the story of all the treaties, but that one is very important because uh, today, I think we should remember that we are committed together to build an area of uh, justice, of uh, freedom, security, and justice. And this is what has driven a huge development of cooperation between the member states. We are part of it, and we have contributed to build it, which means each of us, the staff, but also the experts, the scientific committee, and the management board members. And you know, and God knows, how important is freedom, justice, and security for all of us and outside Europe today. Of course, the, the next step uh, was uh, to prepare for the different waves for the EU enlargement. Uh, and here, uh, I, I want to, to also pay a tribute to some of you who are here today as members. I remember when we first visited you in your countries. And uh, I, I was uh, remembering last week, uh, I was in Warsaw to share our experience the last 30 years of cooperation together. All your eyes were shining when you, we talked about joining the EU, when we talked about EMCDDA and cooperation with EMCDDA. And those eyes, this enthusiasm, this is also on that that we have built our agency and that we are prepared, ready for business with the new agency. And finally, with the Lisbon Treaty, um, I want to highlight one point that is essential to me. It's the inclusion in the Treaty of the Fundamental Rights which are applicable for everyone in Europe, including people who are using drugs. It's not the same everywhere or in some countries or regions in the world. That is part of our European model. And I think today, more than ever, we need to fight for it. And I want to pay a special tribute to the commissioner. I'm extremely thankful for the support, but also for the personal relationship, the cooperation. But I'm also very proud to serve a commissioner that stands always for the European values, for the fundamental rights, including in the island of Lesbos in front of the protesters who would like to lock down all the migrants. And just alone in front of them, she said, no, we will not close. They are human beings. They deserve respect. They are part of humanity. And we, we will not close the center. They've also right. So, Commissioner, that's a very strong action. So talking, having explained how we have changed, what we have moved, what has inspired us all those years, we are, that's the legacy of the work we have done with all the colleagues, all the successive presidents or directors, members of the board, uh, all the experts, 
And also, uh, I have, of course, special thoughts for the Retox network of national focal points. And so many colleagues, and some of them already are not anymore with us. And they played a very strong role. They helped to build the agency. They were part of the spirit. And also, their eyes were shining every time they discussed and worked with us. And they are part of us as much as we are part of their legacy. Our Europe today, as said the Commissioner, is enfronting now in front of new challenges. Drugs are everywhere. Everything can be used as a drug and everyone can face the consequences directly or indirectly. We have two main or three main challenges in front of us. The first is the recent evolution in polydrug use that makes much more complicated to think drugs and demand reduction. We need to reinvent. The second is drug-related violence. And this is also why I made the reference for the fundamental rights because there cannot be a European drug policy without the respect of the human rights. But the drug-related violence, as it is spilling over, we two, three weeks ago in Göteborg, in the streets, there was a rapper that was killed. Last week in Brussels, at the terrace of a restaurant, two persons were, two persons were killed and two others are, are still in the, in the intensive care. So we, we need to address this. We need to include it in the policies, but we cannot let the development of a kind of opposition between harm reduction, public health approach, and then the safety of the citizens. What we tried to build over the last 25 or 30 years is a, what we called in Europe the balanced approach. We need both, but this means that we need to reinvent our policies. Um, and we have also uh, the, the potential new threats with uh, uh, synthetic opioids, synthetic drugs, uh, and maybe partly as a consequence of the ban on the opium production in Afghanistan. So the new agency, all new mission, it's preparedness. And this means that, as I had the opportunity to share with the staff uh, one week ago, we all, you all contribute and have to prepare to be ready to contribute to preparedness. Whether you work in the administration, in the ICT, in communication, in the scientific unit, everywhere, we all contribute in our way with our competences to improve the preparedness on drugs in Europe. And we do and we will do through four actions. Better anticipate, not only building on long-term monitoring, trying to anticipate what can happen in the future and what we should do to avoid or to cope with it, but also to strengthen our alert system. The commissioner made a reference to the future new European drug alert system because the objective ultimately is to better respond to the new threats and finally to learn from the experience and to see how we, how we need and how we can introduce the lessons learned in the new best practice, in the new developments. So our new mission is preparedness through anticipate, alert, respond, and learn. And finally, before I share with you our new manifesto, is a, a last comment about our people. And when I speak about our people, it's our people inside in the agency, but it is the statutory bodies, it's the huge number of people that are part of the Retox network and all the national experts who cooperate and work with us, also international organizations. And I want to especially welcome Justice Tati representing UNODC. Long time we had not uh, UNODC in the, in the meetings and in the family with us. So you are most welcome, Justice. Um, and therefore, I think the new challenges that mentioned briefly, they, they have already an impact on the citizens. The complexity of the drug market is making any analysis, foresight, and adoption of responses more complex and more challenging. There are, of course, many combined factors that I will not detail today, but uh, the successive economic crisis. And in the EU, the last 20 years, the state budgets have been cut everywhere. As a result, for the public health, for instance, in many countries, they have intensive care units that are closed today, not because of the lack of funds, but there is no staff. So if there is another COVID pandemic tomorrow, 
I'm not sure we are going to cope with it as well as we did so far. So that's a challenge for all of us. But it's also social vulnerabilities that have increased and mental health and a very heavy toll on mental health with the recent developments, not only COVID, but the war in Ukraine and the consequences also for the neighboring EU countries and also the situation in the Middle East. All of those factors are interacting in one way or in another with substance use and substance abuse. So the challenge how for us to be able to give better support to our customers, to the member states, to the professionals and to the citizens, the, the challenge is bigger, especially because at the same time, in some countries, and, uh, and we have uh, many elections uh, all over the world this year, it's uh, the stigma on every figure of alternity, alterity, sorry. So feminicides, the stigma on, on women using drugs, drug users as possible scapegoats, uh, and as the, the target of the kind of anti-work propaganda of far-right parties. And we are almost having half the EU member states with the emergence of these kinds of discourse, uh, proposing zero tolerance, including against people using drugs. This would be the, the, the worst situation. We, if we let and if we don't find a way to better address together those challenges that are real challenges, we may lose the benefits of the last 25 or 30 years of EU policy. So together, our people, our staff, our partners, our Raytox network can make a difference. And now to summarize, to crystallize uh, what we have to propose, to offer to all our stakeholders and customers, I will read you, you are the first to listen to our new manifesto. Today, Drugs can take on many shapes and forms. They permeate society accessible to anyone, anywhere. That's where we step in. The EUDA, your European Union Drugs Agency. Our mission is to monitor drug trends, alert on emerging threats, share science-based knowledge, and learn from you and for you to develop robust responses. Your lived experiences inspire our work. With over 100 experts from across Europe, we believe in our collective ability to address drug issues and strengthen EU preparedness, engaging with partners for change. Vigilance is our watchword. Our data will be your tool for shaping effective policies and field programs. Our alerts will be your signals for quick and decisive action. Our recommendations will help boost the impact of your work. EUDA, we stand with you, acting today, anticipating tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alexi. So we're now ready to go to the Q&A session. And I have two colleagues with microphones, if they can just show where they are. There's Sonia over there, there's Adriana there. OK, so I think we have our first question. If you would give your name, your media outlet, and to whom you're addressing the question. Please. OK, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Katerina Demoni, uh, Reuters News Agency. My question is for both the commissioner and also the director of the EU um, Drugs Agency. Um, with more European countries shifting to the right, some to the radical right, uh, some associations we spoke to ahead of this event expressed concerns that populist agendas might have a negative impact on drug policies across the bloc, moving towards more criminalization instead of prioritizing human rights and health. Is this something that concerns you both and how do you think the EU can tackle it? Thank you. Uh, 
I don't want to underestimate what lays behind your question, but I also would like to say that uh, it's important, I think, in my position not to speculate too much on what might happen uh, and to focus on what has actually happened. And what has actually happened is that this agency is very well respected because of the science-based knowledge and people are listening, politicians are listening. So I, I, I feel confident that this will continue to be the case. Alexis already said there's always a risk that you make the drug addicted individuals scapegoats. That is, that's always been the case, that this risk, and we see it somewhere. And of course, this risk is still there. But I, I would like to avoid speculating what might happen and focusing on what is happening. And what is happening is actually that this drug agency has um, a, a lot of respect and respect is growing. And we are now giving the uh, uh, agency also bigger muscles to, to um, a, a, um, execute this. So I feel confident. Yes, thank you for the question. Um, I think I, I, I would I fully agree with the commissioner. We are not there to speculate how it will be in five years' time or ten. But um, first of all, we have a strong EU acquis. Uh, all the programs, the the portfolio, the even the the adoption at the United Nations of the resolution that for the first time uh, includes explicitly harm reduction is a good step, a positive step forward. Uh, and uh, But I want to uh, highlight or insist that uh, for the EU as EU, it was done already much earlier. In 2016, at uh, the United Nations General Assembly Special Session on Drugs in New York, we were together, the EU delegation in New York, and we were extremely proud once more time to be Europeans because the EU statement was very strong, was followed by more than 60 countries and was explicitly making reference to fundamental rights and including harm reduction. So, and then um, I have a, a special uh, thanks and welcome to um, uh, MEP Isabel Santos and also Carlos Coelho and also Ramon Astrugariu from Romania uh, because um, over the, the last years and through the, their support, uh, especially from Isabel as the rapporteur at the Libé Committee, the Parliamentary Committee for Civil Liberties, um, she was the rapporteur for the discussion on the new mandate and the parliament uh, uh, supported even more uh, the importance of uh, involving and consulting the civil society. And I'm very happy and very proud uh, to inform you, for those who don't know, that for the inauguration and the, uh, the launch of the new EU agency, uh, the chair of the uh, European uh, Civil uh, Forum from the Civil Society on Drugs uh, will take part in the ceremonies tomorrow. And for the first time in 31 years, she will address the management board members in the special extended session on Friday morning. So we have a EU Aki. Uh, certainly there are risks and there are threats. They are everywhere and they are all the time. Uh, so, so I think uh, we, we cannot predict what will happen. Uh, we cannot predict if there will be a complete change uh, in the drug policy. But certainly we need and we can stand for what we know, for what we have built in line with the EU policy and the EU values. And this is where I, I see, as we did so far, the role of our agency, which means we are not activists. We are not making propaganda. As the commissioner said, as much as we can and as much as there is and scientific evidence available, we build on that. At the same time, when needed and when requested, we can stand for something. We can testify about the methodologies, about the approach. And but first of all, we can support the member states um, in order, for instance, to avoid uh, that uh, personal data of uh, prostitutes, for instance, as it happened in one member state in the past, could have been disseminated in the entire population with their name, their address, their seropositive status, and their phone number. This, we don't want this to happen never more. And this is one of the things. In the future, uh, we should be able to take a position, not to tell the member states what they have to do, but to stand at their side and to support what has been built over the last 30 years as the 
I would call it the European best practice. I know civil society doesn't find always this is perfect, and of course it is not. But first of all, nothing is perfect. We are just humans. But if we compare with other countries or other regions in the world, we got huge achievements. The, the consultation, the protect, don't punish, the evolution of the nothing about us without us did not exist 20 or 30 years ago. Of course, we have progress. We can improve always. And we are going to build a consultation process as part of the new mandate of the EUDA with the civil society. But still, when we look at it, let's avoid, especially today, but not only today, to see the half full bottle and not only the half empty. We are quite solid. We are quite robust. And if we continue together, we always can and we can do better. Thank you. Uh, next question, please. My name is João Maldonado for, from SICTV. And I think my question is for everyone in the board. So earlier this week, a new drug was detected for the first time here in Portugal. I would like to ask a commentary about it. And um, does it show that there's many work to do yet because the drugs market is always improving itself, reinventing itself? Yeah, well, I, I can take the, the, the only thing I did not understand, which was the substance. I don't know if you mentioned it. I uh, know I didn't. Uh, the name is I don't know if I have it here in English. Um, sorry. Huh? Okay. So so don't worry. In any case, we we have uh, every two weeks there is a, more or less there is a new substance being detected on the European market, uh, and uh, I, I will make the comment more generally about the what. Colina in Portuguese, I don't know. Okay, the well, I, I don't yeah. know it, so sorry. Okay. But but talking about the new drugs, especially the new synthetic, you wanted to say something? You can take a question. I okay, relate. so um, uh, the point is the following. We have a, a very strong and robust, robust European drug alert system. Um, and uh, last year, uh, we have detected more or less one new substance every two weeks, which is... Uh, I would say it's a bit better compared with uh, 10 years ago when there were two new substances every week. But some of them are more potent and more potentially dangerous than in the past. And also, it's not only the, the rate of new substances that are discovered every year, it's also how many of them reappear here or there on the European market. And there are more or less 400 every year. So um, you probably know that there is a global alliance against synthetic drugs that was launched by the US last year, uh, together by the, uh, the, uh, by the State Department. Uh, we, the EU and the member states and the EU agency are, are supporting this action. And uh, what we are going to present this Friday morning uh, at the management board meeting is the, the first overview of a draft recommendation for the member states to assess and increase their preparedness for those new drugs. Because uh, one thing is to identify the drugs as part of a European alert system. The, the second question is, how do we manage to make this information reach the field, not only for detection or alert, but also to care or to cure? Um, and uh, this is one of the new features that will be provided by the agency with the European drug alert system. Commissioner. Yes, I can add because I visited the laboratory at the judicial police headquarters yesterday and I spoke actually to the person who, who d did this first, um, find, find this new substance and these new drugs last week here in, in Lisbon. So uh, this also shows how well this new system works. We have excellent laboratories like the one you have here in, in Lisbon and the Judicial Police Headquarter, and they are immediately uh, alerted uh, the EU DA and they're also part of a network of other laboratories. So this is what we are strengthening now with the new mandate to build this uh, alert system and this network of, of excellent laboratories. Because we can see that, as Alexis said, we see so many new substances. And it's important to have an early alert, but also to monitor how are they developing. Because the patterns of the drugs differs from one member state to another, and sometimes also in a specific member state for different areas. So it's important to learn from each other and to be 
uh, aware of what is or might come to your country or to your area. So this was for me um, because I, I was just told about this this drug and, and they, how they found it uh, yesterday in the laboratory. Thank you very much. I think we have another question from the floor. No. Hi, good morning. Um, Carota Ciudad from FN News Agency. My question will be for Commissioner Johansson. Um, I would like to know if you can give more details about the work, uh, working agreement with Ecuador, uh, what role Latin America plays in this fight, and what other countries you are preparing agreements with. Thank you. Yes, uh, Latin America is uh, crucial, uh, critical for our cooperation. That's why I have stepped up significantly uh, in this area. As I told in my uh, in my uh, first intervention, I was the first ever EU commissioner to, uh, to go to Latin America. I actually did together with Annelies Verlinden, the, the Belgian Minister of Interior. And so now we are uh, investing a lot. So, for example, today we will sign the agreement between the EU DA and uh, Ecuador on the drugs uh, in, uh, exchange information we already have a working arrangement with Ecuador and Europol they have a liaison officer in the uh, Europol headquarters in The Hague we are negotiating a status agreement with Ecuador with Peru with Bolivia with Brazil and with Mexico and we already have a status agreement with Colombia. We will soon uh, open the fusion center in the Puerto Guayaquil, where we will have different uh, resources that will pool together for this uh, ex exchange of information when it comes to the trafficking uh, of drugs. We also had a recently or an ongoing security assessment of the ports in Guayaquil. Uh, that is also based on what we learned from the assessment we did at our European ports when it comes to the security uh, aspect. We have a close cooperation with all the Latin American countries, with Ameripol, of course, but also with um, with Classy and uh, financed by Empacto that has doubled the resources for this police cooperation. So we're doing a lot uh, in this area and it's absolutely necessary. Because it's not possible, I should say, for a single country or not even for a single European Union to fight these uh, criminal networks all alone. Because they are based on both sides of the Atlantic and it, we really need to have this possibility to exchange information and to do joint investigations. And when we do that, we can be really successful and we have seen several examples of that. Thank you. I think, Alex, you'd like to add something? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, uh, to complement what was said by the Commissioner, following the visit of uh, Commissioner Johansson and of Minister Verlinden to Ecuador and Colombia, uh, we have signed uh, two months ago in Bogota a bilateral cooperation agreement with uh, Colombia. Uh, we are going to sign today with the ambassador of Ecuador uh, the, 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 agreement, the cooperation agreement with Ecuador. Uh, we got the okay from our management board following the approval of the commission to sign soon um, after the summer the cooperation agreement with uh, Chile. And we have uh, signed last year uh, the cooperation agreement with uh, Peru. Um, so that's important for two reasons. One is... Uh, is uh, just we, if we want to understand the dynamics of the market and the changes, including the potential emerging threats, but not only, it's extremely important that we continue our cooperation with Latin American countries, for instance, uh, as we started already in the uh, year 2000 or 2002. And there was a, a new development uh, 12, 14 years ago, thanks to the B-Regional Cooperation Program, COPOLAD, uh, for which we are one of the reference entities, together, among other things, with the, uh, 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 with the Inter-American Drug Observatory for CICAT from the Organization of American States. I will meet them next week uh, with my colleagues. We have a, a visit to the U.S. Uh, uh, to, to have some meetings, and we start with the OAS. Uh, what we discussed also during my official visit to Peru and to Colombia and with the ambassador yesterday, uh, it's how important is uh, to include in our discussion the reflection about the challenges from both sides of the ocean when we speak about Latin America, but also with other regions of the world about the challenges to human development. And I think here, uh, maybe we have a unique opportunity since the 
Cumbre de Cochabamba, where for the first time it was said 20 years ago that there was a shared responsibility. Now we are facing in some cities in the EU, in some countries, the same situation that in Latin America they meet for years, which is violence. So maybe for the first time we can have a double flow of exchange uh, from the experiences and the initiatives that they, and the lessons learned also from Latin American side that could help us adapt the responses in Europe, building on the experiences from all sides. Thank you, Alexi. Um, I have one uh, question that came from Brussels that was submitted yesterday. Uh, this is for the commissioner and maybe afterwards Alexi would like to add something. It comes from a Mexican journalist called Inda Bugarin, who's from uh, Universal uh, newspaper. And the question for the commissioner is, um, I, I guess this development of the new agency is goes beyond the name change. What political message is the European Union sending to transnational criminal groups, including Mexican cartels, the Russian mafia and the triads, with the inauguration of the new agency? I think I, I partly already answered that for the, the previous question, but uh, in short, it says, I can say that uh, the message is, you are having strong criminal networks. We are building even stronger networks to fight you. And this agency is part of that. They are not alone because we also need a close cooperation with Latin American countries, as I just mentioned. We also need the strong police cooperation uh, with Europol, but also with, with other uh, police cooperation. We need uh, our strategies that we work together. Uh, and as I mentioned, we will start this fusion center in Guayaquil. Uh, we will uh, have this um, uh, status agreement for the police cooperation with several uh, Latin American countries. We already have it, or we signed one today for the for the drugs uh, agency. We have started the Ports Alliance, so we have a public-private partnership because the shipping companies goes the whole way, so it's important with their uh, exchange of information. So we are doing everything that's needed to build this stronger network to actually fight these very threatening criminal networks. It's absolutely necessary to go for the highest level, to the high level targets of these networks. I should say that we too often uh, stay with taking the ones that drive the boats or do the dealing in, in the streets. Uh, we have to go after the money. We have to go after the high level targets. And to do that, we need this very strong cooperation and strong network to be able to do that. And that is what we are building almost day by day now. And this has been a strong priority under my mandate. And I have full support from our agencies and from the council in this. Thank you very much. Um, we have a afterwards. After me. Yep. Uh, so we have about five minutes left. Um, there's a question here from the floor, and then I have another written question to to ask, and I think we'll be out of time then. Please go ahead. Good morning. João Dinho from Who's the News Agency uh, in Portugal. Uh, you, both of you, the commissioner and director, uh, mentioned the synthetic opioids uh, rise uh, in the last year. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, if uh, both of you consider um, this the major challenge nowadays uh, in drug um, abuse and drug combat. And um, since uh, bearing in mind that uh, these drugs are uh, cheaper many times and more addictive for the consumers. And what if this scenario requires a specific response from U EUDA? Uh, I think uh, uh, Alexis is better placed for this, but to to be short, I, it's difficult to say what is the biggest threat because there are different kinds of threat. We can see, for example, heroin is still the most deadly drug. Huh? Cocaine is the drugs that uh, grows the rapid, most rapidly uh, the availability in the European Union. But the synthetic opioids are very tricky because they are so. Some of them are very potent and very deadly, and they change so quickly, and they're so small. You need such a little quantity to kill a person, and, and some of these are very, very addictive as well. So there are different kind of threats from different kind of of, of drugs. So that's why. And, and talking about um, the EUDA. Uh, this is really important because for the synthetic opioids, it's so important for this close monitoring and this early alert system because they come so quickly. And we learned also from the US when they saw fentanyl coming in uh, and they were not aware. 
And you know, almost 100,000 people dead in one year in the U.S., uh, uh, according to, uh, related to fentanyl. So, of course, we should not do the same mistake to not be aware and not have an early warning system to monitor when new drugs are appearing in the European Union. Well, I, I think there will be next year a vacancy notice for the position of the next director of the agency. I think the commissioner fully qualifies because that is a very, very well-educated answer. Thank you, commissioner. That's really brilliant. I think the last question was the same. So uh -huh. I, I propose we stop here because half those who are in the sun are, are going to, to die from sunburn. Um, Uh, just before we leave and before Cathy concludes, I, I want to address again a special thanks to the Commissioner, to the Member States, to the Council, to the Commission, but also to the European Parliament, because uh, the last 10 years we lived under very uh, strict budgetary constraints. And if there was no new mandate, we would be about to progressively have to close the agency and to reduce the staff every year. So. Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, you gave a future to all those fantastic professionals and their families beyond just giving a future to the agency. And uh, I cannot be more grateful and happy that when I will finish my mission as a director or executive director, this agency will be ready for the next 20 or 30 years. Thank you very much. So just the closing remarks, I'd like to thank all of our distinguished speakers for their insightful contributions this morning. Thank you to the members of the press for attending and for your questions. And we really appreciate your interest and support. So please keep in touch with us. Thank you to our wonderful technicians and all the staff and everybody who made this event possible. Thank you very much. So I now declare the press conference closed and we can now move to the unveiling of the plaque. Thank you very much. Thank you.